Snakes are feared by millions, which is why I make educational content as I encounter hundreds of snakes every year. But how do I do this? So I've been making educational videos about snakes on my Instagram for about a year now. And a question I get a lot is how do I find so many different snakes? And the truth is guys, I'm going to tell you exactly how I do it in today's video. So stick around. So the way I actually get so many snakes is quite simple and it's something you can do as well. And the truth is I have a catch and release permit. And for those of you who don't know what that means, people call me to come out and remove snakes that have ventured onto their private properties and I relocate them back into the wild. So right now we're on our way to a reserve where I can release a beautiful night adder and runkos that was caught very close to here. And while I release these two beautiful snakes, I'm going to explain to you guys how you too can become a snake catcher, catching up to 100 to even up to 500 snakes a year while benefiting their conservation at the same time. All right, so we're at the reserve now that we're going to release the snakes. And what we often have to do is we have to fill out a bit of a register, a rescue, reptile rescue register. This way they can see what animals have been released on the reserve after being relocated. And it's a very good way where we can keep up our efforts for conservation as well as helping people with the snakes on their properties as well as helping the snakes with releasing them back in the wild. So I'm going to fill this up. They've asked me to release the snake quite high and far into the reserve so it doesn't encounter many people. So we're going to go do that. All right, now that we have permission to actually come through and release the snakes, as you can see, Jenna's got the runkos there. I've got the night header over here. It's a remarkably beautiful spot, and it's not too far from where the snakes were originally caught. You don't want to release them too far away because that will obviously decrease their chances of surviving back in the wild, which is definitely not something we want to do. We want to increase their chances of survival as much as possible because that's why we we're rescuing them in the first place so we're going to go for a bit of a walk we have to walk them down pretty far if we want to get them away from people and then uh we'll set up and we'll talk about this a bit more i'm getting a little out of breath already from the walking because i'm talking at the same time but anyway <laughs> let's get going all right so we're at our first spot and we're going to release the first snake the first snake releasing is this night header right here this is a venomous species which is often why people don't want them on their properties because it can mean vet bulls or hospital bulls due to the fact that they are venomous and obviously i don't want them to kill the snake either so by doing what i do you can actually save the snake's lives as well as help people not get any vet or hospital bulls from snake bites but then how do you become a snake rescuer well, it depends on where you are in the world. So if you're in South Africa like me, the way we go about getting a catch and release permit is number one, you have to be trained to handle venomous snakes and to be able to identify them. If you can't do that, there's no point in really doing this because you're just going to get yourself hurt. And you're going to probably give a very bad image to those who actually do do a good job. Another thing is once you've found out how to educate yourself to do this, you can do a snake handling course, whether it's a venomous snake handling course in South Africa, we have a few. We have one from Mike Perry, one from Johan Marais, and oftentimes, depending on where you are in South Africa, there might even just be a local herpetologist who can provide you with a certificate. Once that is done, let me just scoop this guy up here quick, and we're going to put him on the grass, and let's film him as I'm letting him go. And once you have done that, you can see he's going to go off pretty quickly. <laughs> So once you've got your certificate from your local training center, herpetologist or whatever course it is, and you've got a legitimate certificate that you can handle venomous snakes, you can actually contact your local nature conservation entity, whether like say, for example, if you're in Cape Town, Western Cape, they have Cape Nature. For me, in the Eastern Cape, we have the Eastern Cape Nature. <laughs> so they all have their very typical names, but you apply for your permit via them. You'll send in your certificate to prove that you can actually handle the snakes and they can issue it. And it's not very expensive either, but it can take time. But once you can do that, you can start catching even more snakes than you've ever imagined while benefiting conservation at the same time. So now you can see this is exactly how I get to film so many amazing reptiles for my Instagram and stuff like that. And that way I can use these snakes while I release them to film amazing educational content to change people's minds because exposure therapy is one of the best ways to change people's minds the media is already pretty much convinced the entire world that sharks and snakes and all these things are evil they're dangerous they're just out there to kill you 
with my videos, with my calm persona that I'm trying to put off, I can hopefully change people's minds. And for example, this run class now, I'm about to release him here, but before we do that, I'm gonna film my Instagram reel so I can teach people about this amazing little snake. And obviously, if you wanna see the video, head over to my Instagram. If he escapes during my reel, and you guys don't see him afterwards, you know why. But we're gonna try to get my shot, and then I'll show you guys the release. All right, so I actually put him in here, and he was actually very calm, which is fantastic, because Runkos can be very nervous and very aggressive, or defensive, I should say. So the fact that he's sitting like this makes it absolutely awesome. And obviously before I release him, I'll let you guys know a bit about the Runkles too. So the Runkles have a hood just like a cobra, but they're not cobras. In fact, they belong to their own genus of Hamachatus. So true cobras belong to their own genus called Naja. And the reason why the Runkles aren't a part of that genus is because of two key factors. Number one, they have different scales. So Runkles have keel scales, rough dragonish scales, Whereas cobras have very smooth, very, very smooth scales. And the other difference is true cobras lay eggs and runkles actually have live birth. So those are the main two factors that separate them. And runkles are generally an older order of a lapids. And for those of you who don't know what lapids are, they're essentially just snakes with front fixed fangs like mambas, cobras, runkles, king cobras, taipans, and so on. So that's a nice little bit of information for you guys before I release this snake. And obviously if you wanna see more runkles, head over to my Instagram. I've got lots more snakes. And that's obviously how, now that I've shown, sorry, I lost a bit of chain of thought. But now you guys have seen, I can talk about these snakes, educate people, catch so many more snakes than ever before than just by herping and potentially even destroying the environment. Herping is not always the best thing to do. So that way we can benefit all parties, humans, pets, snakes and all. And this guy, is, his life has been saved. He's going free and he's been an ambassador for education. And because of that, he deserves to go out into the wild where he belongs. And if I do that, he should probably just take himself off. Sometimes I give a little tickle here, just like that. Come on, you can see that little hood. And if they don't want to go by themselves, just a gentle nudge can go a long way. I'm so proud to be someone who's doing this on a regular basis. And I just hope one day we can really change the world.